Today's adventure begins at this very impressive theater called the Pickwick in Park Ridge, Illinois, a suburb just on the outskirts of Chicago. As a recording of this Wednesday, April 13th, 2022. It is windy. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. I have acquired, first stopped and purchased not only a piping hot caffeinated beverage, but also an umbrella at the top of the store. Behind me is the Leaning Tower. Not a Pisa, but a half-size replica. About half the height as the one most are familiar with. This one is in Niles, the Leaning Tower of Niles. One of the many spots I will be going by today. I'm inviting you to join me on a very windy, it's not really that cool and crisp, but it's gonna get there. Have the hoodie on, have some caffeine, have the leaning tower of Niles behind me. I'm inviting you to join me, shall you? At some point in my travels today, not too far from this very spot, is the birthplace of not only, also I'm wearing an appropriate t-shirt, I have my runaway Railway Mickey and Minnie shirt on because Mickey would not exist if it was not for one certain man by the name of Walt. But also his brother Roy, they were both born in a house that his parents built back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So I'm going to head over there at some point too. But I will also be featuring other things plane going by through the clouds. That was me yesterday. See it up there. The Leaning Tower of Niles. Whoa! Ho! Also, there is a YMCA right here called the Leaning Tower YMCA that this stands in front of. It is gusty. They do not call this the Windy City for nothing. Technically, this is a suburb of Chicago by the greater Chicago area. I'm noticing this fire hydrant has an antenna of sorts on it. Might be the first antenna I've seen on a fire hydrant. There's also a smaller version of the Leaning Tower of Niles right here that almost looks like a, a big cake. It's not made of sugary goodness, but it kind of looks like it would be. Depicted in front, they got the lean going good too. Seven bells ring at the top of the Leaning Tower of Niles, corresponding to the seven bells at our sister city's tower, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Three bells were cast in Italy by different founders in the 17th and 18th century. And this is what those bells look like. Very interesting. They got the lean down. Circa 1932, and it was also later placed on the National Register of Historic Places which is good, which means it'll be around for a long time. And here are some comparisons and history of each. Over here on this side would be the one here in, near Chicago, well, suburbs of Chicago. 94 feet, diameter 28 feet, leaning at 7.4 feet. Year started in 31, completed in 32. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Year completed 34. This says circa 1932. So in between both of those, 1932, look at 1932-ish, but then you got Pisa, which is 177 versus the 94. And then a diameter of 56 feet, so it's twice as thick. And then leaning, 15.2 versus 7.4. So there's a little bit more of a lean versus this one here in 
Chicago suburbs. Almost looks like a trap door of sorts. I don't want to step on that. There's two of these out front making your way in to the Leaning Tower of Niles. Pretty neat. Wet and rainy. All right, moving on. Drove a little bit of a ways. Over here to the corner of Trip Avenue and Palmer Street. An honorary Disney Family Avenue. Take a look at that. This was the very home that the Disney family built here in Chicago back in the late 1800s. It has been restored. It's, well, it's under restoration. It is not open at the moment, but I did want to stop by. There's a little library here. One of the give a book, take a books. Take a look at that. I believe this area is known as Hermosa, the suburb. That Pluto there. I'm always fascinated with history, and obviously, I do have a love of the Disney history. Very fascinating to think that not only Walt and Roy were both born inside these walls. And without them, not only would not have, you know, Walt single-handedly revolutionized a lot of the entertainment industry, still carries on to this day with Snow White and the, and the Seven Dwarfs, which everyone said was going to be a failure. And then parlayed that money into other projects, which eventually decided to open Disneyland, which everyone said, well, not everyone, but a good percentage of people said it's not going to be successful, it's going to be a failure. You know how that turned out. And then passed on, and his brother Roy, also, built, also who was born right inside this very home, went on to complete Walt Disney World. All in this little suburb of Chicago, it all started right here. A very quaint little neighborhood, kind of tough to find parking. Honestly, not a lot of parking through here. There's a couple spots here and there, but in front of the homestead, there are some bricks that people have placed. Some folks from the Disney archives have placed a brick, as well as many others. Here it says Walt Disney birthplace, and of course, Roy birthplace. I always like to bring up Roy's name. Because Walt would not have been the man that he is known to be without Roy. And the bricks continue all through here. Even more bricks. I would like to go inside there at some point, but it doesn't look like today's gonna to be the day. It's not open. Of course, the family went on to move to Marceline, Missouri when Walt was four. Roy was a little bit older. I think he was eight years older than Walt was. And of course, Marceline, one of the many inspirations for Main Street USA, so Walt really didn't have a major recollection of this house. Roy would have, because Roy was a little bit older and had that retention. 
but I won't be in four. Most likely not. This is kind of peeking into the backyard. There is a garage here. I don't know if that's attached to the home's property or not, but most likely because this is the backyard. Now those that are restoring it, I was looking at their site online and they had a little bit more information. Probably a little more knowledgeable in the situation since they are the one who bought the property and are fixing it up. And they state that it was purchased back on October 31st of 1891 for $800 was the cost of this. And they're the ones restoring it. Walt was born on December 5th of 1901. And also the Disney's fifth child, Ruth, was born on December 6th of 1903 here as well. They sold the property in February of 06, just after the birth, the birth of Ruth. There it is. As to what room Walt was born in, can't confirm. Or Roy, or Ruth. Now Roy was born in 1893, so which made him eight years younger than his brother. Older. Older than his brother. 1893 was when Roy was born right inside there. There's also a photo of both of them at a very young age, easily findable, of them on the front porch. Pretty awesome to think about. And very similar to Laughagram Studios in Marceline, which is also under a restoration. I still have not been in there either. One day I would like to get in here, as well as in Laughagram and Marceline. Will it happen? Who knows? Now I did get in my rental car and drove a few miles away, but I am now outside again on top of something I feel like I need to follow. I should follow the yellow brick road. And that's what I'm doing. The same time frame, late 1800s, early 1900s, in 1899, the Wizard of Oz was written right here, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, in a house that stood right here. Now the house has been torn down, but there is a tile mural here on where, on where L. Frank Baum wrote the now famous piece of literature. Tile yellow brick road here. This was placed here back in 2020. So another very notable spot here in this area of Chicago. So the yellow brick road goes down that way and goes down that way. Oh, here's some information on L. L. Frank Baum. A writer from 1856 to 1919. Lyman, that was his first name. Lyman Frank Baum lived at 1667 North Humboldt Boulevard in 1899 when he wrote the most famous of his works, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. He was born in New York, worked as an actor, and in 1888, him and his wife Maud moved to the Dakota Territory where he briefly ran a general store Later in his life became an editor and a publisher in South Dakota and then moved to the Windy City, Chicago, writing for the Chicago Post. And in his spare time, wrote The Wonderful Wizard of Oz.
enabled him to retire from his job and devote himself to writing full time before moving to California and publishing over 60 more books there. And of course the book went on to be, become the legendary film. This is awesome. Yellow Brick Road starts there, well ends there, and then loops around this way. Stopped raining for the time being. And here's a little info, info on the Chicago Tribune. Well, this is who placed this little marker here. That is pretty dang cool. This is where the home was that he lived in. When he wrote that story, came the book, became the movie, and the rest, as they say, is history. And there is no home here anymore. So really, you could, you could put, there's no home in this place. Well, there is, there's these homes, but they're newer homes. The old home, the old home is gone. Just gotta follow the yellow brick road. Love that movie. And of course, makes me think of the great movie ride, which is now gone. A little tie-in. Oh, fun. Here's, a, here's an interesting fact. Let me turn this around. The shirt I'm wearing, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, is in the same spot as the great movie ride at Hollywood Studios, which I am wearing the hoodie of. This is all a tie-in that had one of the greatest spectacles when it came to presenting animatronics of the film that the book that was written here was based on. Tie-ins, anyone? And of course, Walt and Roy's place. Okay, starting at one end of the yellow brick road. Gonna walk it to the other end. Quite a, quite a tie-in. Great movie ride. The shirt I'm wearing. Runaway Railway in the same spot. Walt and Roy. We have to thank for Walt Disney World. Driving around a little bit, passing by this thrift store, noticing this mural here, it looks like a hamburger, but notice the genie though from Aladdin right there, and it's kind of the tourist genie at the end with the goofy hat on. That's pretty neat. Ah, love some Aladdin. Also should mention Gilbert passed away to the voice of Iago. Oh. Robin's gone, now Gilbert. A lot of comedians from that era that were definitely of a different breed are now gone. Saget, Norm MacDonald, Robin, Gilbert. I'm sure there's some I'm, I'm missing, but I like this mural a lot. I always like touristy genie. Who doesn't? Here's another old theater. Take a look at this one. The Congress? Holy cow. Wow, look at this. A massive mural of Robin Williams with all, all the genies pointing at him and laughing. That is incredible. It's about a block or two away from the other one I was just at. That is a very impressive mural. Look at the size of that thing compared to the car that's parked in front of it. I love it. Probably not gonna make it all the way to downtown today, just kind of staying on the outskirts, but straight ahead is downtown. You can kind of see the skyline up there.
This dental center. Someone's up there brushing those big teeth. Oh, it's the Tooth Fairy as well. Okay. Didn't notice the angel at first, but there's an angel there which represents the Tooth Fairy. Over on that corner is a mural with a spaceship. It's a record and collectible shop over there. Doesn't appear to be open though. There's a spaceship there on the side. I have traversed over to the corner of Greenview and Wrightwood in this neighborhood, right along the sidewalk. Across the way is the spot of a former, well, the former spot, I should say, of a television house that I knew very, very well. In fact, I paid a visit to it when it was still standing back in the year 2016, October of 2016, so it's been well over five years. And even though this brown house here looks very similar to the Winslows, the Winslows house from the TGIF show Family Matters used to stand on the other side of this tree and now there is a massive one, two, three, four stories if you're including the roof. Monumental looking building. Not what once looked like the one next to it that was the Winslows. Tree is still there. The Urkel tree, some would refer to it as, where Urkel climbed up there to serenade. Now this building, when I was here five years, five or six years ago, this house had been torn down and they built this. And now I am here to report, I think this happened a year ago, I haven't been by in a while, half a decade. The Winslows is gone. Now back then, in 2016 when I was here, I took my drone and I flew it up over the, the field behind me and I got the, op the outro credit sequence. Got it pretty good, I kind of nailed it. Man, this is kind of a bummer. Recently, the Ernest house from Ernest Saves Christmas was torn down in Orlando. Reported on that a little bit and I'm here to say that now the Winslow house for Family Matters is gone. And just to give a little venom now, this is what it looked like in the show. Notice that tree there and the house right behind the tree still looks identical. But this kind of beige one, that was the Winslows. That was then and this is now. Right there. And that closing credit sequence that happened at the end of every episode, they had a helicopter kind of went up that direction kind of off and you saw the baseball field and everything and then it panned around from this angle. I don't have a bird's eye perspective this time, but, but that's it. Dang, another piece of TV show history erased from existence. Love that show. One of my favorites. I would put it in my top five favorite TV shows of all time. Three's Company being number one, of course. You know what's kind of interesting? The only two, well, there's 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 five here, but the only two that are newer buildings would be what would be considered the Urkel House, which was next to the Winslows, and the Winslows House, completely torn down. But that over there is original building. This here is, well, I don't say original, but at least from the TV show days. And then this one as well. This seems to be a newer one. But if they would have just change this one and this one, it wouldn't have made as much of a difference to the to the relics of the television show as the Winslows and the Urkel house. But those are the two that are gone. I just another little fact I wanted to throw in there. And according to this, it seems like all through here are going to look like this at some point. They've torn another one down that was right here. I figure I'll stroll past this house that can be seen in the opening and closing credits. So this still exists on screen. Winslow's would have been here. There's that moment at the end in the outro when they're all sitting around the piano and the camera goes out of the window. Now it was not the cast. The interiors were on a set and then they panned to some extras that were playing the family and 
camera panned out and the helicopter went up in the air that way. And then what we could assume was Steve's residence right next door to Laura's and the family. It's right here. Carl and Harriet. What's up, big guy? I am glad the tree's still there for now. All right, just wanted to swing by here. Oh, man. Amazing. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I'm so glad I walked over here. No freaking way. Okay, nice touch. Wow. All right, that makes me feel better. That makes me feel pretty good that they did that. That's cool. Kind of rough, right, rough roads through this section. A lot of bumps. And that's gonna do it for today from Chicago and the outskirts of Chicago. There's an airplane going over my head. I'll see you in the next video, the vlog. I believe tomorrow it's supposed to start dipping down even colder than it is today. I really didn't even need the hoodie today. But once I put it on, I figured, heck it, keep it on. It's kind of right on the cusp of needing it and not needing it. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. What does the word cusp even mean? The vlog is over.